Good afternoon. I would like to provide a few details related to the formatting of your case study. What I have here is the template that I've provided to you. And I wanted to go through a couple things that I think are going to be very important as you are putting this together. Now, the paper needs to be formatted according to APA. And I want to make sure that we're using the correct formatting tools within Word as you are developing your paper. So you notice what we have here is we have the title page, we have the abstract, we have the body of the paper, and then once we're done is we go into the references. This is formatted according to APA, and I want to go through some very specific things related to this paper. The first thing that I want to show, share with you is that what you should be using is you should be using the show hide function so that you can see what is actually taking place in regards to the editing. So if you go to the home tab and on the ribbon, you see this button here that essentially is what we call the show hide function. And when we click this, is you notice that there are some very specific formatting elements that are showing up. So if there is a line break, you're going to see something to this effect. When there is a page break, it will actually show you that there is a page break. In the paper, there is a header. Now in APA, we no longer use the running header, but within the header, if you go to the top of the page, double click it, and you're now in the header function. What we want to do is we want to put the title, a very short title that is uh, less than 50 characters. It's going to be all caps. And then we put the page number. To get the page number, we go to insert and page number. We're going to top of page and it's going to be plain. But what we're looking for is numbering with no formatting and it's going to be right justified, right shifted. What you want to make sure is you want to make sure that the header formatting is the same as the rest of the paper. In APA, you are required to use Times New Roman 12 point font. So make sure that your header is in this Times New Roman 12 point font. Let's look now on the title page. The title is bold. We are using Times New Roman 12 point font. You notice how every word in the title, with the exception of words that we use to combine, uh, such as and, be, uh, are not capitalized, but everything else is capitalized. It is not all caps, but the words are capitalized. The other piece related to this is that you notice that it is 12 point font and we're using double spacing. To make sure that we get double spacing, what you do is you go, you right click, you go to paragraph settings. One of the problems with the formatting in Word is that it is preset so that there is spacing before or after the paragraph. We don't want this. So we want to make sure that the spacing before and after is zero. We want to make sure that our line spacing is double. And to center, what we want to do is we want to have the alignment on center and there is no special formatting. There's no special indent. And we'll talk about the special indents in a, in a little bit in terms of one of the options. So this is what we have. So the title of the paper is bold and you see the bold function on the home tab is the bold is uh, darkened. So we know that that is bold. Your name in the school is not bold. Okay, now we use a page break and it's very important that we understand that we're using the page break to separate pages. We are not trying to separate using the line breaks. The problem with the line breaks is, is if you edit, then the next page is going to shift one way or the other, which is going to be highly problematic. So we use a line break 
or we can actually use another function and I'll explain this in a few minutes. The abstract is your next page. The abstract title is centered. And again, you notice here, we go to the paragraph function, as the abstract is centered, there is no additional indentation, there's no special indentation, spacing before and after zero, and the line spacing is double. The abstract itself is not indented, so we do not indent the abstract. I just have some additional comments here that is in the template that you um, have uh, within your paper. You notice that we do another line break and then we get into the body of the text. So the body of the text is we have essentially our first title here. And the first title essentially is a replication of your paper title. There's going to be a brief introduction and then there are going to be some very specific headings. Now you notice that we're not going to, in your paper, you're not going to have level one heading, level two and so forth. Um, but when we're looking at this, again, if we're looking at these headings, we go to the paragraph setting and before and after is zero, line spacing is double, this is centered. Sometimes I see students that try to center using the space bar or some other mechanism, don't do that, is make sure that it is formatted um, just like this, okay? Now, the body of the text you are indenting and then you notice that there is no additional spaces between sections. So we have the header, we have the paragraph or paragraphs that we're writing and then we go immediately into the, uh, the next heading. Again, if we're looking at this is we are looking at zero, zero line spacing double the difference here is that we have a first line indent 0.5. There's two ways that we can do an indentation for paragraphs. There's one way that we should not do. So we should not use the space bar to try to indent. The problem with using the space bar is it's very difficult to be consistent in terms of making sure that we have the exact same space. So what we can do is we can do a first line indent of 0.5 or, and let me just show you here, if this is none and you notice that it's now not indented, simply put your cursor at the beginning of the paragraph and hit the tab button. You're going to get the 0.5 indent. Either way works. Now, within APA, the what we call a level one heading is bold and it is centered and we are capitalizing the words. There are now also level two headings. Level two headings are shifted to the left. These are also bold. They're also um, capitalized. And um, what we wanna consider when we start looking at the level two headings is you always need to understand sort of how things flow. So we have a level one heading. If we are using level two headings, the general rule is that you would need at least two level two headings to justify using these headings within the text. Now, there are level three, level four, or five, but for our purposes, my uh, thought is that you really should only be going to a level two heading. Okay, now you notice something interesting here. So we have the budget considerations, which is a heading. It's actually showing up at the top of the page, but the paragraph related to this budget considerations is actually on the next page. So this is what we call an issue related to orphan. So the orphan is the header is on one page, the body of the text is on the other page. What some students will do, and some people that don't have a skill set within Word, will simply just um, bring this down and then bring the, the, the header with the document. We don't want to do that because we know what Word entails. Okay, so what do we do? 
we're going to highlight the heading. We are going to right click. And in the paragraph setting, you notice that we've been looking on this uh, tab here. So it's centered, body of text is, uh, it's body of text. Uh, there's no indentation, there's no special indent. Spacing before and after is zero and line spacing is double. Everything is fine there. But what we want to do is we want to go to the next tab, which is line and page break. We can click the button that says keep with next. So when we do this, we are still keeping the structure where it's double spaced, but we now have the header actually moving with the body of the text that relates to that header. Now we know that this is actually, the formatting is this way, because you notice that the little square box uh, to the left, this essentially says that we have kept this to the uh, to the next section. Okay, um, you see all the documentation here. Um, now what we want to talk about is the references. Okay, so you notice what we did is we did a page break. I'm going to show you something else that we can use instead of a page break. So what we have is we have the body of the text, we have the references. So we can essentially do a page break uh, at the end of the prior paragraph. And we do a page break by going to the insert tab and hitting page break. Okay, the, you've got to watch this because when you do the page break, uh, you want to make sure that the references goes to the top of the page. So you want to remove that extra line. Okay, that is one way to do this. The other way to do, to set up the references on the next page, and actually this works with any of the, uh, uh, any of the work that we need to start a new page. If we highlight where the beginning of the page is, we right click, we go to paragraph, and then uh, we've talked about indent and spacing, we've talked about line breaks. So on the line break tab, is we click page break before. And this is actually a pretty neat tool because it really guarantees that the header goes to the top of the page. Sometimes if the text from the prior page extends to the very bottom, uh, sometimes hard to get the page break function to work exactly correct. But this is another tool that we want to look at. Okay, so we've talked about the body of the text. By the way, I do have some pictures here that share with you the concept that we're going to describe in the references. And let's talk about that right now. So the references is you notice that everything is double spaced, double spaced between the lines and, and double spaced between references. You also note that we're not using a line break at the end of each line. So the question becomes is how do we get this hanging indent? Well, if you highlight the reference, do the right click, go to the paragraph setting, the indent and spacing is what we have here is we have this set up as a hanging indent. So again, the alignment is left, outline is body of text, indentation before and after, uh, the line is zero, Line spacing is zero before and after, it's double spacing, and we're using a hanging indent. Okay, so let's look at a reference. And this first reference is a journal article. Just a couple things to keep in mind is everything is single spaced after punctuation. So we have the first last name, the first author's last name. We're not spelling out first names or middle names. And if the author is a PhD or some sort of title, we're removing that. It's simply last name, comma, first initial, period. You notice that there's always a space between the first initial and the second initial. We are always separating authors with a comma. And then we're not using the word and, but we're using the ampersand symbol. The year is in parentheses, we have a period. The article title 
is we capitalize the first word, we capitalize the first word after a colon, and any proper nouns, names or whatever, would be capitalized. At the end of the article title, there's a period. You notice that the journal name and the volume is italicized. The issue is in parentheses. There's no space between the first parenthesis and the volume. Page numbers, we have the beginning and ending page, and then we set up the DOI number. The DOI number should be set up so that there is a hyperlink. So if you click this link, it would actually take you directly to the article. We have a couple of other examples of this. This is an example of a book or a chapter in a book. This is an example of a web page. Uh, most of you will be citing a financial statement. The best way to cite a financial statement is directly from the um, SEC website and what we're looking for here is we have the US Securities and Exchange Commission is the author. The title of the report is italicized and we have a fiscal year here and then there is a link that takes you directly to the financial statements. Okay, I think that pretty much covers everything that I want to cover related to this document. Hopefully this creates some value for you as you're going through your final edits of your paper. I thank you very much for your time and uh, best wishes for the continuation. Thank you very much.